Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and I have an itchy face. It makes me wonder where I put my face. I don't know. Anyway, it'll be fine. Uh, so today, what are we going to share with you? Well, we're going to share with you over 63,000 subscribers, so help us grow that. Tell your friends, tell your family. Click like, click subscribe. Even if you don't like us, click subscribe. It helps us out a little bit. And it wasn't Brian Barczyk that said be good to each other. So be good to us and click subscribe. You know, I'm not going to stoop so low and say do it in his honor because he probably wouldn't really care if he subscribed. But I do miss that guy. But today, Caleb, what are we going to talk about today? So we're shipping out snakes. It's shipping snake weather. It is now a finally shipping snake weather in Kansas consistently. We should be able to ship all the way through most of June. Not all of June. And then July, August, we'll sketch on the heat. And then September, October, November, more shipping season. And then we hit the, the, the domes that start in December. And run through usually March. It gets a little rough. But it is shipping season, so we are going to show you the next shipment going out, which will be three snakes to one customer before we have to say goodbye to these snakes forever. And then the very next week, I know we already have about another six going out. And if you're waiting on the shipment, now's the time to tell us we're ready to send out everything. It's all gotta go. So let's start with this shipment. Bring me one of the snakes for this shipment. And tell me what you're bringing me, male or female. So, uh, and it's kind of cool when you get to ship multiple snakes out to people. You kind of see what they like, what they don't like, and get a feel for it. And that's all pretty awesome. Oh, I can tell what this one is from here, I think. This is the... Calico male. Yeah, I was all say ma mahogany when you're picking up. I looked at the tail. This is a little calico male. So this thing is really cool. I really like calico. Now, when you look at this particular calico... This side is not, I get a little bit of white, a lot of flaming, but it's not super white. A little bit there, a little bit there, but the tail is a telltale sign on calico frequently enough. Look at the tail on this side. That orange is just beautiful. So when I see this in the calico, this is the calico I really like for combinations because I know it's going to come out more and more. That's the part I really like is the arborations in the tail. Not as cool on this side as it is on the other side, but you have a lot of cool pattern linking through here, and you can see more and more white's going to come in as this thing grows. So it does have a little bit of white, but it's not what I call a high white calico by any stretch of the imagination. However, the tail pattern on this thing is Billy Badass. So there's that one, and what's going to come up next? Uh, and yep, you're going to have a few single jeans in here, then you have a combo snake also going out. That it does include a recessive. We'll probably do it last. But uh, all three of these, same person, all three of these leaving on Wednesday. Now this one's a bigger one. It's been needing a new home for a while. It's finally going to get shipped out. This is a single gene uh, mahogany. So if you're looking, think it looks kind of like a normal, wants to bite my face off. I see you, buddy. Uh, if you look at how dark it is, and look at how dark the head is especially, that's going to tell you everything you need to know about this snake being a mahogany. I'm out of range, buddy. You cannot get me. Boop. Ha ha. No, that did not ball you up at all. No. So when there are assholes like this, you, you need to pick them up. Just simply come from the back and just pick them up. They'll be just fine. Now they'll bite Kurt. So uh, that way he can kind of see the face. But really pretty snake. Mahogany by itself is not a gene that's going to be overly like, oh my God, that's mahogany, unless you know what you're looking for. Uh, I think if you're brand new to this, you could easily mistake one of these for a normal, pretty simply. But the head's a giveaway. They're very, very dark. They're overall got a darker look. The pattern's a little bit different. You can see it if you know what you're looking for. And this is pretty decent mahogany. But you can guarantee that's mahogany, right? It is mahogany. That was a suma. That is also a snake. I'm going to apologize now. You'll probably see this video if you're receiving these after you've already received them. And I'm going to bet that one might take a poop in the bag. I'm just going to be honest. It looks like it's got some stored up there. And they'll do that, and then you'll ship them, and they'll poof in the bag. Apologize in advance. Outside of my control. Now, this last snake, this is a snake after my heart. This is the kind of thing I really like. Uh, and this is... A Super Pastel SK Exantic, I do believe, is what we're looking at here. Another little angry one, not as angry as before, so you can see how light the head is, how good the blushing comes through. Just overall, really nice, nice uh, snake. You can see all through the back there. Not as blush on the back as some, but uh, if you compare this in the color to a, a Pastel Exantic this size, they're already starting to change, because this is a super memory source. And you'll get more of a darker gray here. These super pastels save very, very light as they age. 
they look really good as adults. So I really like these snakes. I think this is a great jumping off point. Also a male if memory serves. Um, for an exanthic project. Why do I like these for an exanthic project male? Because as much as I like the killer zebra bee and the zebra bee, some of my favorite snakes on the planet, that spider is going to limit what you can do with that animal as a breeder, right? It just gets in the way sometimes. Here, you don't have to deal with that, and you're also going to guarantee yourself passing on exanthic into everything, since it is a visual, which is really, really a good deal. And since it's a super pastel, you should pass pastel on to everything. I know somebody's going, oh, who cares about pastel? I still feel when you're working with exanthic and you want to get that really light color, that you've got to get a, a copy of pastel on that. You don't have to always go super, but having a copy in there with maybe fire or yellow belly or something else is going to get you that lighter color and contrast. Those two colors should almost be together all the time. Exanthic and pastel should almost be a permanent link in my personal opinion. Um, not always, there's exceptions. And here you're going to pass on both those genes every single time. Anything you want to add about these? No. Nope. So what's your favorite of the three? Probably the super pastel exanthic. Oh, mine, mine too. I mean, obviously, it's, it's got a lot going on. Kurt, what about you? Uh, exanthic. Now, Kurt was still thinking, I wish it was something other than exanthic, though. <laughs> but I still, this is still where my heart is. My heart is still with the exanthics. I still love them. They're still my favorite single gene, my favorite combo. If this entire collection could be exanthic for me, it would be. But if I did that at this size, I wouldn't have enough variety to kind of please all comers. So that was why we didn't, and we branched out and other things. Excuse me. All right, well, guys, that's kind of the three snakes we're shipping out. Yeah. Anything else you want to add, Kurt? Nope. Caleb, what about you? Nope. All right, guys, that's all we got. We'll see you all next time.